Discover your true worth. Ananda was a young Buddhist monk who lived in a monastery in the mountains. He had been studying under his master body for several years, but he was not happy. He felt that he was not learning anything new or meaningful from Bodhi. He thought that Bodhi was too strict and harsh and that he did not appreciate his talents and efforts. Ananda was good at many things. He could recite the scriptures by heart. He could meditate for hours. He could debate with anyone. He could perform various rituals and ceremonies. He could play musical instruments and sing. He could paint and draw. He could write poems and stories. And he could do many other things. He was proud of his abilities and he wanted to show them to the world. He wanted to be admired and respected by everyone. He wanted to be the best monk ever. But Bodhi did not seem to care about any of these things. He only cared about one thing, the practice of mindfulness. He taught Ananda to be aware of his thoughts, feelings, sensations, and actions, and to observe them without judgment or attachment. He taught Ananda to be present in the here and now, and to appreciate the simple and ordinary things in life. He taught Ananda to be humble, compassionate, and grateful. Ananda did not understand why Bodhi was so obsessed with mindfulness. He thought that mindfulness was boring and useless. He thought that mindfulness was holding him back from achieving his true potential. He thought that mindfulness was preventing him from finding enlightenment. Ananda wanted to learn more than mindfulness. He wanted to learn the secrets of the universe, the mysteries of the mind, the wonders of the spirit. He wanted to learn from the great masters of the past and the present, the ones who had attained the highest levels of wisdom and insight. He wanted to learn from the ones who could perform miracles and magic, the ones who could transcend the limitations of the physical world, the ones who could see beyond the illusion of reality. Ananda decided to leave the monastery and seek enlightenment elsewhere. He hoped to find a better teacher who could show him the true path of wisdom. He packed his belongings and set off on his journey without telling anyone. He left a note for Bodhi saying, Master, I thank you for your teachings, but I have to go. I have to find my own way. I have to discover my true worth. Please do not worry about me. I will be back when I have found what I am looking for. Farewell, Ananda. He did not know that Bodhi had seen him leave and that he had smiled and said to himself, Go, my son, go. You have to find your own way. You have to discover your true worth. I will be here when you come back. I will always be here for you. May you be happy, Ananda. Ananda traveled across the land, meeting various people and experiencing different situations. He tried to apply what he had learned from Bodhi, but he often failed or got into trouble. He realized that he was not as smart or skilled as he thought he was. He also missed Bodhi's guidance and kindness, but he was too proud to admit it. He met a group of scholars who were debating about the meaning of the scriptures. He joined them and tried to impress them with his knowledge and eloquence, but he soon found out that they knew more than he did and that they could easily refute his arguments. They laughed at him and called him a fool. He met a band of thieves who were planning to rob a rich merchant. He joined them and tried to impress them with his cunning and bravery, but he soon found out that they were more clever and daring than he was and that they could easily outsmart and outrun him. They betrayed him and left him behind. He met a woman who was beautiful and charming. He fell in love with her and tried to impress her with his charm and generosity. But he soon found out that she was more seductive and greedy than he was, and that she could easily manipulate and exploit him. She cheated on him and took his money. He met a hermit who was living in a cave. He admired him and tried to learn from him. But he soon found out that the hermit was crazy and delusional and that he could not teach him anything. He scared him and chased him away. He met many other people in situations, but none of them gave him what he was looking for. He became more and more disappointed and disillusioned. He wondered if he had made a mistake by leaving body and the monastery. He wondered if he would ever find enlightenment. One day, he arrived at a famous temple where a renowned Zen master named Zeno lived. He heard that Zeno was a wise and compassionate teacher who could help anyone achieve enlightenment. He decided to join his disciples and learn from him. Zeno welcomed Ananda and gave him a simple task, to sweep the floor of the temple every day. 
Ananda was disappointed and confused. He thought that this was a waste of time and that he deserved a more advanced and challenging lesson. He did not understand why Zeno was making him do such a mundane and trivial chore. He tried to impress Zeno by doing other things such as meditating, reciting scriptures, debating with other disciples, etc., but Zeno did not pay any attention to him. He only reminded him to sweep the floor and nothing else. Ananda became frustrated and angry. He thought that Zeno was ignoring him and that he did not recognize his potential. He felt that he was not learning anything from Zeno either. He wondered if he made a mistake by leaving body and the monastery. He decided to confront Zeno and ask him why he was treating him so poorly. He accused Zeno of being unfair and unhelpful. He demanded that Zeno give him a proper teaching or let him go. Zeno smiled and told Ananda that he had been teaching him all along. He explained that sweeping the floor was not just a physical task, but a spiritual one. He said that by sweeping the floor, Ananda could learn to be humble, diligent, mindful, and grateful. He said that by sweeping the floor, Ananda could clear his mind of distractions and attachments and focus on the present moment. He said that by sweeping the floor, Ananda could discover his true worth, which was not based on his ego or abilities, but on his inner peace and happiness. Ananda was stunned and ashamed. He realized that Zeno was right and that he had been blind and arrogant. He saw that Zeno had been a good teacher and that he had been a bad student. He apologized to Zeno and thanked him for his patience and wisdom. Zeno forgave Ananda and praised him for his honesty and sincerity. He told him that he had made a great progress and that he was ready for the next step. He gave him a new task, to return to body and the monastery and to share what he had learned with them. Ananda agreed and prepared to leave. He felt a new sense of joy and gratitude. He realized that he had found what he was looking for and that it was within him all along. He bid farewell to Zeno and his disciples and set off on his journey back home. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the story of Ananda and his journey to discover his true worth. This story is based on a Zen teaching that reminds us to be humble, diligent, mindful, and grateful in our daily lives. It also teaches us to not judge a teacher by their appearance or methods, but by their wisdom and compassion. It also teaches us to not be overconfident or impatient in our quest for enlightenment, but to find our true worth within ourselves. I hope you enjoyed the story that I have shared with you today, and I hope that this story and this advice will also inspire you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss any of our upcoming wisdom stories. You can also leave a comment below and let me know what you think of this story or if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos. I would love to hear from you. Thank you for joining us on Wisdom Quest. Until next time, stay wise and stay curious.